Welcome, welcome, party people. Come on in and take a seat. My name is Daryl Wilson, and today I'll be showing you how to build a WordPress website step-by-step -step with Elementor. So guys, I spent weeks making this video so complete beginners like yourself can walk away today with a really professional looking WordPress website. Plus, you will learn how to use the Elementor page builder and all of his features, which is currently right now the most popular WordPress page builder for WordPress. So today after watching this video, you will be able to create your own website and you will also even be able to start your own web agency tomorrow if you wanted to. Trust me, this stuff is so easy. So go get your favorite snacks, go get your drink, pull up a chair and let's get started today with this WordPress tutorial. Today I'll be showing you step by step on how to build and customize a modern and beautiful looking WordPress website. And the great part about this video is that you don't need to know any sort of coding or HTML because we are using the number one most popular drag and drop page builder that makes it super easy to build your new WordPress website. And as you can tell, this website looks very professional yet simple. So I'll be showing you how to build and customize every part of your website so you can walk away today with a beautiful website that your visitors will love. Now you can build any type of website you want in this WordPress tutorial. You can build a business website, a portfolio website, a restaurant website, you can make any type of website you want with this WordPress tutorial. I'll be showing you how to make vibrant and beautiful designs with free templates that will stun your visitors and make you and your website look really professional. And with 150 free templates to choose from, you can definitely find a template and style to fit your business needs. And just to make sure you make great looking websites, I'll be giving you some professional design tips and quizzes to help you with your web design skills. So today in this video, I'll be showing you how to build your new website with WordPress and Elementor. WordPress powers more than half a billion websites and it is by far the most popular platform for making websites. As of 2021, WordPress powers more than 40% of the entire internet. Elementor is the world's leading page builder for WordPress. Elementor first came out in 2016 as just another typical page builder for WordPress. However, the Elementor page builder was a lot more intuitive and stable than was currently on the market at that time. In 2018, Elementor hit a staggering 1 million active installs, and by 2021, Elementor has been installed on more than 5 million websites worldwide and growing. Elementor now employs more than 150 staff and is consistently improving their page builder. So you'll be using the most modern and up-to-date software to build your new WordPress websites. So with all that said, let's take a closer look at the WordPress website you'll be building today in this tutorial. Okay, so this is the website that we'll be making today and you will actually get this entire template for free just by watching this video. Now you'll see we have the logo at the top left. We have our pages and you can make in as many pages as you want. So we have the home about services, the contact, and then we have this button where they can go and contact you or request quote, or we can take them to another page. And then here we just have another section that offers some additional services. And then I kind of threw in this plant here just to kind of take away from all this white and just to give it some, you know, some friendly elements and just add some decor to the websites. And then here we just have a, an image and you can put your image there and just some general upsells like why choose us where you can talk about your business. And then also for those of you who have portfolios or something that you want to show your visitors, uh, we have this portfolio here. And then again, we added in this little image right here, this friendly element, just to kind of add something to the website. So it's not all, you know, white in the background. And then we have some partners. So you can put your customers or people that we work with. And then we can create some testimonials here. And then below that we have our staff. So we have meet our leadership or you can meet the staff and you can put images of your staff right there. And then scrolling down, we have just some more additional information like your phone number, your location. And then we finish it off with the footer here at the bottom. So now we'll be using Elementor, which is a very fluid drag and drop builder. So for example, uh, here I forgot to put help. So I'll put how can we help you? And also we have these elements here on the left side and you can just drag and drop these elements onto your page and then all the changes are saved and live on your website. So for example, I'll drop this text editor right there and then I can change this text to anything that I want. And let's say, for example, you want to add a button. Maybe you can take them to a contact page or somewhere else. I can just drag and drop this button and then I can change the text of this button to something else. And then I can just rearrange everything with this builder. So you can see it's a very fluid builder. It's very simple to use. So I'll be showing you how to use this drag and drop builder in this tutorial. So I'll be giving you all the template for this and also showing you how to build this by yourself using a drag and drop page builder. 
And this is the about us page. So we have this, uh, you know, just some general information about your websites. We have this little, uh, this section right here where we hover over it. It can kind of uh, bring this little gray color. And then just some other information about your company and then some numbers. And then again, finish it off with our footer at the bottom. And lastly, we have this contact us page where you can go ahead and submit a contact form and users can go ahead and ask a question about your services or your business. You can also go ahead and put a location of your current uh, business on this uh, Google Maps. And then on the right side, we just have some more information like your, you know, your address, your email, your phone number. And then at the bottom, it's the same thing. We have our footer at the bottom. So ultimately, this is a very clean website and it's multi-purpose. So you can use it for pretty much any style website just by swapping in the images and making it look a little different. But overall, I think you're gonna really like this website. Are you guys ready? Are you guys excited? Good, because we're gonna build your new website in five simple steps. Step one, we will get your domain and hosting. So for example, myamazingwebsite.com. Plus it's super cheap and you can host your website for as little as $3. You will also get an exclusive discount from the owner in this video, and that's exclusive to this channel. Step two, I'll show you how to make pages, install a WordPress theme, and start designing your WordPress website with Elementor. Step three, I'll show you how to use a theme customizer, some WordPress plugins, and just some additional settings for your WordPress website. Step four, I'll be showing you how to make your website mobile responsive. So it doesn't matter what kind of device your visitors are using, such as an Android or an iPhone, your website will look great and be responsive on all mobile devices. Step five, I'll be teaching you how to use the Elementor Advanced Features. Elementor offers some really cool features that can really speed up the workflow of your website. So I'll be covering all of this in the advanced section of the video. And make sure to stay till the end because I will talk about great resources to get tons of free Elementor templates and Elementor plugins for your WordPress websites. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase discounted web hosting. And this is namehero.com. Now namehero.com performed as the most fastest and one of the most reliable web hosting companies out there. Now, how do I know that? How do you know I'm not just lying to you, right? Well, I actually tested Name Hero against 20 other web hosting companies for 90 days and Name Hero performed as one of the fastest and the most reliable web hosting companies on my list. In fact, Name Hero had zero downtime this whole week, so you'll have a reliable and a fast WordPress website. Now, I contacted the owner of this company to give me a special discount, so through my link exclusively, you all will save 70% off your web hosting. If you go to the website normally, you'll only save 50% off your hosting packages, and the owner gave me this discount just for my viewers on YouTube. So when you get to this page, you will click on Get Started Now. Name Hero offers four different types of web hosting plans. They offer the Starter Cloud, the Plus Cloud, the Turbo Cloud, and the Business Cloud. For those of you who are just getting started out for the very first time, I recommend the Plus Cloud. I think that's suitable. It gives you a lot of SSD storage. It's a very affordable plan, and your website will be very fast. However, for those of you who have been using WordPress for a while and you want to upgrade, I highly recommend the Turbo Cloud. Now, the reason why I recommend the Turbo Cloud is because this plan offers the NVMe storage technology, which is a new type of storage technology for web hosting servers. For example, so this graph is from pcworld.com and you'll see that the NVMe storage can transfer data a lot faster than typical SSD and SATA hard drives. Also, you'll see that the NVMe storage can access information a lot faster than typical SSD and SATA hard drive. So for those of you who want a blazing fast website, I think the actual Turbo Cloud is a pretty good option. But I know everyone out there is on a different budget, so just select the package that works for you. And once you select the package, we'll scroll down to the bottom, and then you'll click on Order Now. All right, cool. So this is where you're going to enter in your new website. So for example, my new amazing website.com or my dog is amazing.com or whatever you want to put. I'll just put demo tutorial 123.com and click on search. And look at that. We get a free domain on top of that. So once you select your domain, you'll click on continue. Lastly, we have the review and checkout. And look at that, you just saved $125. You have a year of web hosting and ID protection for under $70. So you have a very good value with namehero.com. Once you're on this page, you will scroll down. 
Next, we have the billing details. So you've seen this screen before. You'll put in your first name, your last name, your social security number, your bank account. I'm just kidding, guys. They don't want that information. <laughs> it's a joke. You'll put in your billing address and any other information you see here. For the support pin, make sure you write this down. So if there's an issue or you want to know something about your accounts, they will want to know about your pin just to verify that it's you calling and they wanna make sure it's not just some random person over the internet trying to get your info. You'll create a password, which you probably use the same password for all your other websites, right? I'm just joking. I, I do that sometimes, but I should really stop that. We have the payment method, so you can pay with credit card, PayPal, Coinbase, or credit card, Stripe. Look at that, people are using crypto. In fact, crypto, I think Bitcoin's almost at $20,000 right now. <sighs> Yeesh, it's crazy, man. This is going up. And then you can go ahead and fill all this information out. Once you fill everything out on this page, you will then click on the checkout button. Now I will purchase an account and I will meet you on the very next page. And congratulations on registering your domain. So this is your current client area. Here you can access your support, you can access billing, you can purchase more domains, or you can upgrade or purchase other web hosting packages if you want to do that. And Name Hero has very good support. So at any time if you have a problem with your website, under the support, you can open a ticket or you can contact them anytime if you have issues with the websites. So next, let's install WordPress onto your new domain. Under the My Cloud, you'll go ahead and click on My Cloud. I like this new interface Name Hero introduced. They recently remade their whole website. For those of you who have been with Name Hero for a while, you can tell they did a really good job at making their site look really nice. So I will click on the Plus Cloud. The next thing that we will do is we will access the cPanel. So on the left side under actions, you will see login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on login to cPanel. All right, cool. So next let's install WordPress. Let's scroll down, just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. We're going to find WordPress installer and we're going to install WordPress onto our domain. So under software, you'll see WordPress manager by Softaculous. Go ahead and click on that. Next, it's going to say install a new copy. So let's click on install. All right, so this is the software setup. So let's just change some quick settings while we install WordPress onto our domain. For the protocol, make sure you have HTTPS. That just makes sure that your website has a valid SSL and that just lets people know that your website is secure. For the indirectory, make sure nothing is there. That just means your website.com, you know, that's it. We don't want it to be whatever that is. So just leave it like that. For the site name, you can give your website a name and you can also give it a description. So this can be web agency. You guys can see I've, I, I do this quite often and I just put a cool website agency or something like that. You can change all this later, so don't worry about it. For the admin username, uh, make sure you put something that you know because you will need this information to log into your website and change it. So I'll put Paddywhack. And then for my admin password, I'll put uh, Patty Wack 99 for the admin email, make sure you have access to this specific email. Cause let's say for example, you forget your password. You will need to have access to this email to retrieve your password. And I'll scroll down. You can also select your language, but I just speak English. So I'll leave this as English, but you can select all of these languages like Spanish, Turkish, Arabic, and, and all those languages and scroll down. And then we will click on the install button at the bottom of the screen. So now it's installing WordPress onto our domain. All right, WordPress has successfully been installed. On the administrative URL link, you can click on this link right here. And congratulations, you have now successfully installed WordPress and your website is now live on the internet. All right, congratulations, you now have a website online. So you installed WordPress and your website is online. So in this next section, I'll be showing you all how to make pages, how to install WordPress themes, and just how to start designing your new WordPress website with the Elementor Page Builder. So let's go back to the video. All right, so this is the back end. This is the dashboard where you can make changes and you can adjust your website. However, if you want to look at your website right now while it's live on the internet, on the top left, you can click on your website name and click on visit sites. And this is your current WordPress website. So it's using a default theme. It's kind of bland, kind of boring, but not to worry, we can make, make it look really, really good. Let's go back to the back end. So to go to your back end, you'll go to dashboard. Now, before we build the website, we need to make some small changes to the general settings. First, we'll go to users and we'll go to profile. 
This is where you can adjust your profile and also change your email and password for your WordPress websites. You can also select a specific color scheme and I do like this new modern one. So I think we're gonna stick with this one, but you are more than welcome to go with any sort of scheme that you want. We'll scroll down. Now, if you ever wanna change the email for your websites, you can do that right here. And this is very important because if you forget your password, uh, it'll go to this email. So make sure it's a email that you have access to. Then under new password, we can set a new password. So you can select a new password there if you ever wanna change it. And then once you're done with all those settings and all that good stuff, you'll click on update profile at the bottom. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, if you speak a specific language, you can change that within the back end. Under settings, you can click on general. And right here for site language, WordPress has various languages that you can switch. It has different dialects and they did a really good job at uh, translating all these languages. So uh, you can go ahead and pick a language that you're comfortable or if you speak English like me, you can just leave it as default uh, as English. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the permalinks for the websites. Under the settings tab, under permalinks, go ahead and click on that. Now we're gonna change this right here to post name. Now the reason why we're doing this is because when you visit a website, usually it's you know yourwebsite.com dash about us, right? Or dash services or dash contact us. So we don't really need all of this right here. And actually this is much better for SEO and it's very good for optimization. So go ahead and select post name, scroll to the bottom and then click on save changes. At this point, we are now ready to start designing the website. So under the appearance tab, go ahead and click on themes. And let's click on add new at the top. And next I'll click on popular. Now let me explain WordPress themes. So essentially how WordPress themes work is every WordPress website has a specific theme and style. Every single one of these themes has very similar options to each other. One might have something that looks different than the other, but ultimately it's just a different way to frame and style your website. However, with today's page builders, a lot of these themes are becoming a little bit more obsolete because you can use the page builder to design everything. Now, the theme that we're gonna use for this specific tutorial is called Astra. Under search themes, I mean, the theme's right here, but if you don't see it, uh, just go ahead and type in Astra. Now, the good thing about selecting a WordPress theme is that you can always switch different themes. Let's say, for example, you're using uh, the default theme or you're using something like, uh, here, I'll click on popular. Let's say for example, you're using Hello Elementor and you wanna to switch to Astra. You can do that and you will not lose your work. So remember, it's the page builder doing all the work which we are going to install next. So under the Astra, you'll click on install. All right, it's installed, now let's activate it. All right, awesome, so we have now installed the Astra theme. The Bloxy is also a very good theme. Uh, they don't have a lot of starter templates, but I'll talk more about themes and switching a little bit later in the video. Now, since we switched the theme, we can go ahead and take a look at our website. So I'll go back over here to visit websites. And now you'll see how the website has sort of changed. It has a different scheme, it has a different style. So remember, WordPress themes are essentially just different ways on how to frame your websites. So now that we have our website up, let's go ahead and make some pages. So usually we have this home page here and we don't have any other pages, we don't have a menu. So let's go ahead and make pages and make a menu. Let's go back to our dashboard. So over here under pages, I'll click on all pages. Now you might have some pages that come with WordPress by default, so you can go ahead and delete those uh, if you wish. And I think you should because you know those pages are pretty much useless. But let's just go ahead and make a page. So uh, over here under pages, I'll click on add new. And then go ahead and give your home page a name. So this will just be home page or just home. And then I'll click on publish and publish. So I made the home page and now I wanna make the about us page. So let's go back to the little WordPress icon and then the same thing under pages, add new. Here we go, about, and then publish and publish. And then one more time, we'll just do it for the contact us just to make sure you guys you know how to you know add pages. So here we go, contact us. And then we'll click on pages or publish and publish pages. Silly me, silly me. All right, so we created the contact us page. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to create a menu. So we need to assign these pages to our websites. We'll go over here to appearance and we'll click on menus. So now we need to make a menu for our website. So this will be just basically like primary, primary menu, right? The, the most important menu on your website. And then I'll click on create menu. 
Next we have pages. So now you can see the page that we created right here. So I'll click on view all and I'll do the home, the about and the contact us. And there you might come across two abouts actually. And that's a good thing it did. So you get it to home pages because this is the default home page that WordPress creates by default and it's a custom link. However, we do not need this. So for this custom link, we can remove that. Now this custom link could be anything. So this can be like a, another website, this can be your shop, this can be your Facebook page. You can make this anything that you want. So for example, you can put like Facebook page and then you can put your link to your Facebook page right here if you want to do that. However, I'm just going to remove this. Remember, you can add custom links to your uh, menu at any time by clicking on custom links and adding them to the menu. And that's pretty much it. Some people use custom links for social profiles or groups or something like that. Now that we have our primary menu, we can go ahead and rearrange it. So I want the home at the top, the middle and the about in the middle, and then the contact us right there at the bottom. And then once that's done, I will click on save menu. So we created our menu. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our website. So let's go over here to visit sites. And then we have our pages here at the top right. So we have contact us about, and then we have the home page. The next thing that we need to do is we need to assign the home page as a home page. So we need to tell the website what is the first page that our visitors want to go to when they visit our website or that we want them to go when they visit our website. We're going to use the theme customizer. So you'll see this customize at the top. Go ahead and click on customize. Now the theme customizer essentially changes various parts of the website that the page builder normally does not. However, we will talk all about the theme customizer and come back to it a little bit later in the video. But first, the only thing that we need to do from this section is go to home page settings. And for our home page, we will set a static page. And for the home page, we will select it as home. And then click on publish. And we can close this. All right, so now we have our pages and I think we're all ready to go. Now let's go ahead and install the page builder. So we're gonna install a free page builder. It's really intuitive, it's really simple to use and it's actually the most popular for WordPress right now. So let's go back to our dashboard and under plugins, you'll click on add new. You guys are gonna love plugins. Plugins are basically applications for your website and there is a plugin for pretty much everything. There's a plugin for selling products, there's a plugin for SEO, there's a plugin for building websites, there's a contact form plugin, there's a security plugin. I mean, there is a plugin for virtually everything and I think there is over, what, 52,000 plugins. So no matter what you need for your website, there is definitely a plugin for it. I had uh, people in the past who needed booking websites or membership websites and that is all available for plugins. Now uh, we're gonna install this plugin right here. It's called Elementor. Now under search plugins, you can just type in Elementor. It's the most popular page builder for WordPress. You can see it has more than 5 million active installs with 5,627 positive reviews. And they update it quite often. They're always adding in new features. It kind of is hard to stay up to date because all the features they add are really incredible. But go ahead and click on install now. And once it's done installing, you will click on activate. All right, congrats. So we have the page builder installed. Now let's go over here to pages and click on all pages. So we're ready to now use the page builder to start designing the websites. So we first want to design the home page, right? So under edits, let's click on the edit under the home. However, before we start designing the website, we need to change the structure of the actual frame of the websites. So for example, this is our home page. However, you can see it's not full width and I want my website to be full width and I want to get rid of this sidebar. This is where the theme options come into play. This is why we're using this specific theme because it gives us this functionality. You'll see this gear icon at the top right. Go ahead and click on the settings. Now we have these asterisk settings right here and this is from the WordPress theme. So for the sidebar, I don't want a sidebar on the home page, right? And for the content layout, I want it full width and stretched, meaning I want the actual content to stretch across the whole page. And I also want to disable the home title page because I don't want visitors to see home. They don't need to know that. We're gonna use the page builder to design the website. And once that's done, we can click on update and there we go. You can also add a transparent header to this as well. That means you can have an invisible header. So if you don't want people to see your actual header, you can make it transparent, which is actually pretty cool. Now at the top right here, you'll see edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. All right, so we can now start building the website. Now on the left side, you're gonna see elements and it's pretty simple and pretty self-explanatory you can just go ahead and drag and drop any of these elements within your website to start building it. 
So for example, I'll click on this little plus icon and let's have a two column row just to start, right? And I'll click on the icons to go back to the widget section. And then let's say I wanna add in some text, right? I can just take this text editor, I'll drag it in there. And then we can change this text, change this text to anything. Wait, did I spell that right? No, 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 no. There, there, there we go. What's wrong with me? I graduated and I can't even spell. Now I'll go back to the elements and you can go ahead and keep doing this. So for example, an image, you can drag in an image and then you can change this image to anything that you want. And then let's say also right here, I can add in a button. Now let's say for example, I wanna link them to a specific part of the website or another website, I can go ahead and put them, uh, take them to my websites. So now when they click on this button, it'll take them to um, darylwilson.com. Now for every element, they're virtually all the same. So for every element, you're gonna have a content, which is changing the actual content of it, the style, which is changing the color, the fonts, the background color, and also the radius. So that means I can make this a circular button if I want. And then there's the advanced option. The advanced option allows you to add other various things like uh, adding and padding, which is space and other of these other advanced options. We will talk more about all the advanced options a little bit later at the end of the video. But for right now, let's just, you know, we're getting our feet wet. We're just getting started out. So I don't want to scare you guys. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and say, all right, well, for this section over here, I want to, you know, throw in a text editor. I want to put in more text. And then I can add in something like another image. And then maybe we can add a button as well below that. Now a quick crash course. So let's say for example, you know, this is too close to the top, right? I want to put some space. This is where padding comes in. And I'll introduce you to padding right now just because we're going to use it throughout the video a little bit later. However, I'll click on this little uh, icon right here and this will actually control this specific column. So this little gray icon controls this column and this gray icon controls this column. And then this at the top, this controls the entire section. So for example, I'll click on this little, uh, you know, click on this little column and under the advanced section, I want to add padding to the top. So I'll click on this and let's say I want space. Now you can see that we're adding in space to the top and also I can add in space to the bottom. So for example, it's very, you know, it's very scrunched. I can say, you know, give me some space you know, get out of here, you know, get out of here. We got some space there. And then there we go. So that's just a quick example of how you can actually use these elements and just drag them in and just overall use the, the builder. On your own time, you can kind of use this to kind of get comfortable with it. You can mess around with it, you know, grab a beer and start throwing in icons and see what you can do. Let's see here, what is this by default? There we go. Ah, cool, it's a little heart or a star. And then you can, you know, change the alignments of this and then so on and so forth. Now there is a pro version to Elementor that gives you more elements that you might need throughout your website. However, you don't need it just yet. And I will have a little walkthrough on the pro version if you are interested in later in the video. But for now, I'll go ahead and delete uh, all of this right here. Let's say, for example, I want to put in a three column row, right? We can put in a three column row and then you can essentially just do the same thing. You can drag in elements and then you can go ahead and even duplicate this and then you can drag it and you can also duplicate it. Now, remember, all these have a duplicate uh, function. So you can duplicate this and duplicate that, duplicate this. And you can also drag and drop. So for example, I can take this and I can drag it to the top and this element here, which I'll change to nothing because you know it's, it's, it's easier to, to stand out. I can take this pencil and I can drag it within a column like that and then so on and so forth, something like that. So now you can see that you can visually start dragging and dropping elements throughout your website. So now that you know a little bit about editing, you know how to drag and drop stuff and kind of move stuff around, Let's upload a block and then we'll practice with that and then we'll move on to the more advanced stuff. So you'll see we have this little template folder. Go ahead and click on add templates. Now Elementor comes with some default templates that'll really help you out with your website. However, a lot of these are in the pro version again as well. And if you do want access to the pro version, I'll leave a link below to purchase the pro version, but you don't need to just yet. Some people don't need the pro version and I understand that. But here are some templates that you can use. Now, the ones that say pro on it, unfortunately, that's the uh, Elementor Pro Builder. And yeah, but there are some free, um, there are some free templates that you can use like these ones at the top. However, I think I'm more interested in blocks. So go ahead and click on blocks. Now with the blocks, what you can do is let's say, for example, I need a landing page, which is also called a hero. We can go over here and click on hero. And we can use these on our website. Now I think something like this is really nice and also this, so sound of the future. 
I will go ahead and insert this specific block onto the websites. So over here, I will click on inserts. Now, the next thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to connect it with Elementor. Now, you can make your account for free. It does not cost you anything whatsoever. And you do get access to tons of blocks that you will need to kind of help build your websites. So right here, go ahead and click on Get Started. So I'll go ahead and connect my website with Elementor. And we're doing this because we want access to their library of templates. I think some of you might need to sign up if it's your first time. But if you do have an account, you'll just need to click on Connect. And voila, now you'll see that we have this really beautiful big landing page where we have this background and we also have this uh, this audio of this song and we can edit all this as we want. So we can change sound of the future to sound of the uh, sound of the wind or something like that. And then we can go ahead and also drag in elements. So just like before, we can drag in the elements and we can change that and we can modify all of that. Now let's say for example, well, you know, I don't need this section, so I'll go ahead and delete this. And I want to add in an image. So I'll go ahead and drag in the image right there. So you might have images that you want to add to your website. So let's go ahead and upload an image. So to upload an image, you'll click on choose image. Now I have demo images for all of you in the description below of this video. It's in a zip folder and you can use those images on your website and you can use them on any website that you want, courtesy of Astra. Now I will be giving you all a template in this video that gives you the full websites. However, I also have the images for you as well. In the description of this video, you'll see a link to a zip file. You can go ahead and download that and you can upload those images as practice for your websites. So over here under upload files, I will click on select files. Now the folder that I have is called images for tutorial. And then you can go ahead and uh, double click and then you can go ahead and upload all of these to your WordPress website. So I'll go ahead and click on all of these and upload them and click on open. So these images are now all uploading to my WordPress website. All right, that took me around three minutes to upload those images. Now let's say for example, you have an image and you just wanna upload it to your website. So I'll click on the image and on the bottom right, I'll click on inserts. Now you'll see how we have that image display. Now you can do this for pretty much every section. So for example, let's say I wanna change the background image of this whole section. Under these little six dots, we'll go to style. Remember style controls the, the, like the design, the topography, the color. Now here we can go to image and change this image to something else. So I'll grab this one and click on insert media. Now you'll see that we have this other image in the back. And now this image kind of doesn't look good. It kind of stands out. So we can just delete this now. So I'll right click and I'll click on delete. Now this is our landing page and I gotta be honest, you know, this is a pretty solid landing page. It does need some work here and there, but for a beginning website, this looks pretty well. Now let's say for example, we have an overlay here. So the image is a little bit darker. And the reason why it's darker is because over here under background overlay, we have a black color kind of uh, over it. So what we can do is we can reduce that overlay or even change the overlay color. So for example, you'll see I can change this to like a red, or I can click on this little green and change it to this green. I can also reduce the strength of this uh, overlay by kind of dragging the transparency there like that. Or we can have no overlay. And I think actually no overlay looks a lot better. So I think we'll leave it at that. However, you can add a gradient overlay. You can add any kind of overlay that you want to any single image on your website. Now also for the background, you can add in a gradient. So if you don't want to use like an image, you can use like a gradient color where you have basically like two specific colors at once, something like that. And then you can change the location of it. You can change the uh, the angle. So you can change like the style. People do like gradients. However, my personal advice guys is don't, don't, don't use gradient. It's, I know it's beautiful, but it's really hard to carry gradient throughout your website. So just stick with an image on your homepage. Trust me, you'll, you'll thank me later. So now that we have this, we can click on update. And that's it, we're done with our landing page. And this is probably one of the hardest things to do. Now for quick practice before we upload the templates, uh, go ahead and click on add a section and click on the three column row. Now let's say for example, you wanna add in an image and then text and a button, which is standard. And you'll probably do that a lot on your website. Go ahead and drag in the image. We'll drag in the text editor. And then we'll also put the button there like that. Now to do this all the time would be very tedious to keep doing that. So we can go ahead and duplicate this. So on the right side, we can click on duplicate and then also duplicate again. Now you'll notice how that makes more columns, but we can just delete these columns by right clicking on this and then delete it. Right click, delete it. 
So you can see you can save yourself a lot of time by using their shortcuts and it makes your life a lot easier and you won't have to spend a lot of time on one specific section. So for the choose image, you can just grab in something like that, it's like this mock-up, and then this one here. You know, we can go ahead and change it to like that and we'll use these black gradient, which looks really, really sharp. I really like the way that looks. And then here we can change the, the color. So now that you know how to change all the features here, under the style, I can say, you know what, maybe we can add in something like a black button. You know, we can even change the topography. So in the topography section, I like Poppins, guys. Poppins is a great font. So Poppins, and I do like Poppins bold. So Poppins bold like that, really, really good. And then you can change the size of it as well. You can make it really big or really small. And then you can mess around with these options on topography. You can go crazy with this and have fun. So let's say, for example, I made this button, right? But I don't want to do that all over again to all these buttons. You know, you want to have the same button design throughout your website. Well, no worry. So on the pencil, you can right click and you can do copy. Next, we'll go to this button and then I'll right click. And now we'll click on paste style. So I, what I'm saying is I want to paste that specific style on this specific button because I don't want to have to do everything all over again. I mean, that, that would suck, you know? So there, paste style and voila. And then again, if we want to add in some padding to the top and the bottom, uh, under this section, the, uh, the, sec the whole section right there under the advanced section, I'm going to say, you know, guys, uh, give me some space here. You know, like I tell my girlfriend, give me some space. You know, you're way too close to me. She gets really annoying actually. But I love her, so yeah. And then we can add it on the bottom as well, like that. So that looks something more standard. You know, it looks clean. I like the way that looks. Now let's say, all right, well, I made this section, but it's a little bland. I want to add in something like a background image. So over here under the little, the, the, the dots again, under the style, we have the background. You can select classic, gradient, video, or slideshow. But I'll just do classic and select an image. And then I'll just do something like uh, like this right here, this little flower, all right? We got this flower. Now, when you upload an image, you might notice that uh, it doesn't look that good and you might have different styles. Now, Elementor has tons of different styling options for your images, which is really cool. So for the position, we can just leave it as default. However, I do not want that to repeat and I want to contain this. So that means I want this to be inside of it. Now, you can also do cover, which will cover the entire background with the image, but I will just do a contain and you know that's how you can do that now also we can do a custom so i can kind of here we go wait wait wait, wait. Con contain and then under position we will do custom so you can change the position of your actual background which is really really cool so we can you know mess around with that and that you know that looks good yeah so once you're done with all of this you'll go ahead and click on updates so I think you understand the basics now of the builder and I think we're kind of ready to kind of import a template and you know go go the next step you know you guys are you guys are graduating congratulations you guys are no longer babies you guys are you guys are good students so let's go back over here to dashboard and under appearance we'll click on astro options So next we have this installer plugin so go ahead and click on install importer plugin I'll click on install and now it's activating it. The great part about Astra guys is that you're gonna have access to hundreds of templates that you can design and you can control. So here I'll select Elementor because that's the page that we're using. Now you're gonna have access to all of these templates that you can use on your website. So we have uh, a template for pretty much everything. So for example, we have one for yoga. And the great part about Astra is that they have all of the pages. So they have the home, you know, the courses, the about, the contact, and you get all of the images for free in this and they import everything for you automatically, which is really, really cool. So let's import a template. I'll go back over here and I'll just say, I wanna import this one for now. Click on import complete sites. Now I want to remove the previous website. Now, if you don't wanna delete your website, make sure that's not checked. However, I want a clean slate on my new websites and I'll go ahead and click on import. Now, before you do that, I just wanna let you know that it will create a new menu for you and it'll also update the pages for you for this specific template. But not to worry, again, remember, you can create as many pages as you want. So I will click on import. And congratulations, this is now your new website. It's beautiful, everything's done for you. The guys over there at Astra, they just make some really good stuff. You know, now you can just go ahead and swap everything. So now you can go ahead and click on edit with Elementor and you can completely redesign this however you want, just like we did before earlier in the video. Now let's say, for example, you wanna add another page to this, right? Let's say, for example, you are, um, I don't know, you're a lawyer and you want to, 
uh, terms and conditions page or something like that, we can go over here to plus new and go to page. So this will just be like terms page or something like that. Terms, terms, wait, 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 wait. terms page, there we go, terms. And then also for the sidebar, I want no sidebar. And then I want this stretched, right? And then we'll click on publish and publish. Now, when you create a page, you need to also assign it to the menu. So don't forget to assign your new pages to the menu. Because if you go to your website again and you go ahead and just check it out, uh, I'll go over here to visit sites. Even if you make the page, it's not gonna be visible on your menu. However, if you don't want a page visible on your menu, you don't have to have it. Remember, you can link them to your, uh, you know, your terms and conditions page. Now, whenever you wanna link them to your page, you can click on view page, and then this will be the actual terms page. You can just copy this, and then you can put it in the button there. Some people make pages that you don't want on the menu. You know, Not everyone needs a privacy policy a page on the menu, right? So you don't have to like be literal, but uh, I'm just giving you an example. So let's go ahead and go to the, the dashboard. And then over here under appearance, we'll go to menus. So now let's say you wanna drag in the pages that the starter template created, which are the Elementor ones. So we can drag in the home, the services, and the contacts. And then also we can go ahead and add those to the menu. And then we can also add terms to the menu. If you wanna add it, you know, you don't have to. However, if you wanna add a drop down, I'll take the terms and I'll drop it under this menu. Now I will delete the about us because we don't have anything on that page and I'll also delete the contact us. It was our old school menu, you know, it had, it had to go. And this is now our primary menu and I'll click on save menu. But I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this as a separate page and then just click on save menu. Now let's go back to the front of the website. So now you'll see we have all of our pages here. And if we click on terms, now we can click on terms and now we can design this and we can also edit this with Elementor. However, remember, I don't want the title there. So if you do wanna change that, you'll click edit page. And on the right side under the Astra settings, we can disable the title, click on updates. And now we can do the same thing, rinse and repeat. So now we can edit this with Elementor and then we can start designing this page with the page builder. Now, one thing to note, uh, once you install that specific plugin, you'll get a new Astro Starter template and you can go ahead and upload those templates on pretty much any page. So click on Starter Templates. And then what we can do is we can just go ahead and drag in any of these uh, templates that we want. They also have blocks as well, which is really cool. So you can actually, and you can use these blocks on your website. So if you wanna use a specific block, you can go ahead and uh, just click on this. And then you can click on Import Block. And there you go. And then you can design this and style it and make it look really cool. So you can see how easy and fast it is now to make a website with Astra and Elementor. Now you can also do the same thing with the actual templates. So for example, let's say you're using this template, but you don't like the About Us page, right? You're like, nah, I don't like the About Us page. It kind of sucks. You can go through another one and say, you know what, uh, I like this one. You know, I like, uh, I like this About Us page. And then you can do the same thing by clicking on Import Template. And ta-da, now you have your new uh, terms page, of course, but you'll probably put your terms and conditions here. But I just wanted to show you that you can go ahead and use these templates on various pages, but then you can change this to like the terms and conditions, terms and conditions, and then you can put your terms, you know, you can delete all these sections because obviously there's nothing happy about terms and conditions unless your website, you know, offers something like that. But you can just start adding in text here and just say, you know, if you use our content, we'll sue you, we'll throw you in jail and, you know, all that stuff. And then they can, you know, read your terms and conditions. So I'll go ahead and click on update. That leads us to the next section. Now I do wanna show you something really quick to help you emphasize the design. So over here under the dashboard, what I'll do is I'm gonna show you actually that I used one of their templates and just by adding some small changes, you can make it look a lot different. So under the starter templates, I'll go over here and I'll scroll down. There we go, all the way to the down, all the way to the down. What does that mean? And then here I have the digital agency. So this is the actual template that I used and I remastered it. Now this template, I do like it. I like the wireframe. However, I just felt there was a little gloom. You know, I felt it was a little dark and just kind of, you know, it was almost there. So what I did was I just took this theme or took this template and I redesigned it. So I turned in from this to something like this and you can see how it's similar. However, I added in little things like this flower 
And I kind of gave it this minimalist, like kind of clean approach. We have these pencils right here. And if you look at their background, it's just this blue on blue on blue. And I just felt it was a little depressing and that's why I decided to change it. So you can use my template for free. Um, it comes with all of the pages. I've, I've redesigned all of the pages for all of you. But uh, the whole point of this guy is saying that you can use these templates and just by adding in different images, changing the color, and just by making some small tweaks, you can make this website pretty much anything. You can make this a cooking website. You can make it a lawyer website. So you don't necessarily need a specific theme for a specific niche. You can use any style and then just change the images and then voila, it's a new, uh, it's a new website for that specific niche. So let me quickly show you all how to import this template. So over here, I'll go to my website. I'll leave this in the description and I'll click on add to cart. Now I'm also gonna show you how to import templates. So maybe you make a website, right? And you wanna put it on another website. I'll show you how to do that in this section. Now I'm going to click on proceed to checkout. All right, and then we have our email and our name, and then I'll click on place order. Now, once you uh, place the order, you will get access to a zip file. So this is the zip file that you'll need. So go ahead and click on the download the zip file. So once you do that, I'll go ahead and drag this on my desktop so you guys can all see what I'm doing here. So I'll just drag it here. I'll double click on it. And now we have these templates. So if I double click, you will see we have the homepage, the footer, the contact about us, and the JSON here as well. Now there's a real quick shortcut on how to do this on your website. Let's say for example, we'll go to our pages, right? And this will, you know, this will work for any page. Let's go to the about us page or the, the home page here. So what I'll do is I'll click on edit with Elementor. So next I'll click on the actual gray folder. And then here we have this little upload icon. So I'll click on import templates and then we can just drag and drop it like that. And once we do that, you'll now see it's there. So it's the home page right here at the bottom. And I'll click on insert and yes. All right, and there we go. So now we have the template uploaded. Now all you need to do here is you'll just need to change the color of these buttons. And the reason why they're this color is because the theme customizer is basically controlling this with a global style. We will talk about the theme customizer in the next section. But overall, you can see that all you need to do is maybe just change the text to whatever you want, change the button color, but the images and the entire wireframe is there for you. All you have to do is just go ahead and make some small changes to the websites. So that's how you can go ahead and upload that to your websites. Maybe over here, we can go ahead and add in some padding. So over here, I'll say, you know what? I wanna add in some padding here. So I'll go ahead and get rid of this margin actually, and then just go ahead and add in some padding like that. Just, oh no, 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 no. We have to click this and then we'll click on padding at the top like that. So we're just adding in space right there. And then I will click on updates. So that's how you can import the starter templates and how you can have a really quick website. Um, if you guys have any questions about that specific part of the video, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, again, I've kind of remastered everything and it does also include all of the other pages as well. Now, let's say, for example, you messed up. You're like, Daryl, I messed up my website. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, can I go back and fix stuff? Or maybe it's too much. What do I do here? Now, a lot of beginners have the same problem. So let me show you a plugin that you can use to fix everything on your website and start over. Now, I'll go back over here to dashboard. Now, again, the reason why I'm, <laughs> I'm introducing this because all the, all the beginners, they just make a lot of mistakes like I did and they want like a refresh, right? So over here, click on add new. And don't be ashamed guys, don't be ashamed. It happens to everybody. Under plugins, I will type in resets. And you can just reset your WordPress website back to like the stock. So it's like, you know what, I wanna get rid of Astra, I wanna get rid of all these plugins, it's too much. Uh, over here, you see WP resets. I'll click on install now. And then I'll click on activate. So here are the plugins that we have installed. So there's Elementor and there's this also plugin, it's head, Elementor header and footer, which is what Astra installed. That's what allows us to have a special header and footer. But over here, we'll see open WP resets tools. And then on the bottom, I'll just type in reset right there. So reset, and we can reactivate Astra theme and, or we can reactivate the plugins, but I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna hit reset websites and I just wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna fresh start guys, I messed up, you know, everyone messes up. And there you go. So now if we go back and we visit our websites, 
So now you can see our pages are gone, our menu's gone, all of our content is gone, and we can go ahead and start from scratch. So party people, I hope this part was helpful. Um, I think it was pretty easy, right? Now I'm gonna import a starter template, and then in this next section, we will talk all about the theme customizer. See, I told you guys this stuff was easy, right? So now that you all know how to use the Elementor page builder to design your website, now let's talk about the theme customizer. Now the theme customizer controls various options throughout your website that the page builder normally does not. So I'll be covering everything about the theme customizer in this section. I'll also touch base on WordPress plugins and just some other additional settings for your WordPress website. So let's go back to the video, guys. All right, party people, break time. In this part of the video, I'll be talking about the importance of color and show you how to implement color correctly on your websites. Now, when people visit your website, that is usually the brand and the color scheme you should use throughout your website. For example, let's go look at my website. My website, I have this black, red, and white color scheme. And as you notice, I kind of carry that throughout the website. So we have all of these colors being consistent. The same thing with Name Hero. So when you visit Name Hero, right away you notice the colors are gonna be white, blue, and orange. And they're gonna carry that color scheme throughout the website. So we're not gonna expect any red, we're not gonna expect any burgundy. We know that this is the brand and the style of this specific company. So when you are creating your homepage and your website, use a color scheme of around maybe four colors. So you can see Name Hero is using blue, white, orange, and they probably have one more, maybe like a gray or something like that. I, or I guess white is, you know, white's a color, right? So, but yeah, mine too. So I have, uh, you know, white, red, black, and I also use gradients as a wild card. So I have gradient here, and then also I have gradient here. So you can use a fourth color, and that can be your quote wild card, which is what I like to call it. So let's take a look at this website. So we have this green overlay with this blue button. And as we scroll down, now we have this red section. So right away, you're like, wait, 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 what is this red? Why do I need it? This is totally out of line right here. So your visitors will just be very confused on where they're going now. It's like, okay, a red, or now we're going back to blue. So when you're building your website, you wanna make sure that you are using specific color palettes throughout your website. Also, I found this really cool article by this website called bluemagneticinteractive.com, and it shows you the importance of color. So for example, if you're using green, you know, that shows stability, money, positivity. If you're using like a black gray, that's also used for luxury brands. You've noticed Rolls Royce, they use like a black, a black and a gray. Also Apple, they have that gray kind of like high so high end look. And then also red is important. That's actually a very good uh, sales gimmick is uh, red is urgency, and you'll notice that many buttons on many websites are usually red because it's saying, hey, you gotta click this button, you have to click on it. And I know it doesn't tell you to do that, but your your brain subliminally sees these colors and the, the wheels start turning saying, oh, okay, red, click on it. And then we have blue, which is trust. So you'll notice that a lot of YouTubers, they like to use blue because they want you to trust them. So a lot of banks use blue as well. So you'll see that um, Chase uses blue, uh, Capital One uses blue and other various banks tend to use blue because it just shows trust, you know, it shows integrity. That's why you see companies like Facebook use it because they want you to say, oh yeah, you trust us, you know, blue. And I know subliminally you, you don't, you're not aware of that, but that's how colors are interpreted by uh, our brains. So that's just a quick rundown of colors. When you are using colors, be very cautious. If you wanna add like a black to your background, just know that you're adding a dark scheme, maybe like a luxury high-end style where you're trying to attract uh, big dollar clients. And if you're using something like a pink background, then you're attracting someone like of a, a girl, maybe kid, something like that, background or audience or whatever you wanna go for. So just be mindful, you know, and the main goal is whatever colors you introduce on your homepage, that is your brand and you should carry that throughout your website. So that is my web design tip number one. All right, party people, in this section, we'll be talking all about theme customizers and we'll also talk about other various WordPress themes. Now, every WordPress theme has a theme customizer. And remember, the theme customizers control various parts of the website, like the blog, it'll control your uh, archive pages, it'll control your header and your footer as well. Now, Astra recently introduced their new header and footer builder, and you click on primary header, you have this layout right here with only three little styles. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn on the header builder. So let's go back to our dashboard here. And under the um, appearance, we have Astra options. And I'll click on, I'll just close this. Yeah, that's annoying. So here we have the Astra header and footer builder, and I wanna click on use the new header and footer builder. All right, so let's go back and click on visit sites. 
and then I'll click on Customize. All right, so now we have various options. So for example, Global, we can change the Global. So um, here we have Buttons, and you can change the, the Buttons globally as well if you want to do that. You can also do that with the, um, you know, the colors and also the topography of all of these, um, you know, uh, uh, elements on your website. However, I want the page builder to do that, so I don't want to mess with all of those. But let's click on Header Builder, and now we can go ahead and start building our header. So you might notice at the top right here, we have this header. And what we can do is we can add elements to this header. So for example, I'll click on this plus, and I will uh, grab in like an account. And I'll put in the account at the top. I'll also click on plus, and I will add in social icons. So I want the social icons to be here at the top. Here we go, here we go. Oh, what, what? There we go, just drag it in there like that. There we go. Switch it, there we go. Now, if you ever wanna customize your, um, your elements, what you can do is double click, and then you have the elements. So for the design tab, what we can do is, I wanna say, you know what, for the color type, we can have it a custom color, or I can say official. So now you'll see that we have these colors at the top, and then uh, you can go ahead and change the icon size. You can see they're bigger and all these options here. And then you can go ahead and add in more social icons like Behance or other, you know, other social networks. And then you can click on plus again, and then you can go ahead and add in more content here. Like uh, HTML is essentially just text. So let's say, for example, you wanna like give them a message or something like, uh, you know, welcome to the website. Uh, one space th there. And then you can go ahead and click on the design and then you can change the color and the topography and all of that cool stuff. So that's just an example of the header and footer builder. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can just go ahead and drag and drop elements. And you can also do this with the footer. If I go back, we'll go to footer builder. And the footer builder is the footer of the website. And then you can go ahead and design the footer of your website as well, uh, just like you did the header. So I will click on publish. Now, one quick note is Astra is actually using an additional plugin for Elementor to use the actual uh, footer. Now, if you want to disable that, what we can do is click on the X icon really quick and then go to our dashboard. And under plugins, under installed plugins, we can deactivate this plugin right here. So Astra installs this plugin for us when we import the templates. And that's what creates that really nice header and footer by default. However, you can have the theme build your header and footer for you by clicking on deactivate. And we can scroll down to the bottom and now you'll see that our footer is gone and now we can build it with the theme customizer if you wanted to go that route. So for example, the footer builder, now I can click on plus and I can add in like a widget. A widget is essentially like an about us, you know, or something, uh, some sort of element. So let's say add a widget, you can put in just some, um, you know, you can put in some text for example, text, and this text can be like the home page, and then this can, you know, this can be about the home page or how we got started. And then you'll see it's all right there. And then of course you can add in more widgets and you can add in social icons and then you can build your footer uh, like that. So let's go back over here. Now there's other options with throughout the theme customizer. And again, these all control different parts of the website. However, with today's themes, all you should really worry about is the actual header and the footer. So I will go ahead and click on publish. Now also one thing to note about the Astra theme is we have this transparent header right here. However, I don't want it transparent. Now for Astra specifically, we can turn this on and off. So for the edit page, I'll click on edit page. And if you want to take off the transparent header, we can click on disabled and then click on updates. Now, if I view the page, you will see that uh, we now have this background. Now you can design this background using the header builder. So I'll click on customize really quick. Now you'll see these three icons on the left side of each. So this can control the color and other various parts. So for example, it can control the height. So you want it skinnier. And then for the design, we can have it as a different background. So I can have it as like a red or gradient or something like that. Or I can even put an image there if I wanna do that. Sometimes if you're gonna use a gradient, guys, you might need to actually click on publish and then close it and then it'll appear. So there are some you know small things about the theme customizer 
that, uh, that do that, but I'm not sure why. But sometimes if you don't see the changes being made, you'll need to click on publish and then close it and it should work. So for the top bar, we can change the design as well by clicking on color and image. And then maybe you want like a black background like that. And then you can kind of keep designing this. And I think you guys get the point here. So that's how you can kind of design each specific row of the actual header. So now that you're familiar with the actual header, let's talk about other themes. So let's go to dashboard. And this is a very common question that I get with uh, a lot of beginners is, can I use other WordPress themes even though I already made my website? And the answer is yes. You can go ahead and switch throughout themes um, if you wanna do that. I think one of the best new themes is actually Bloxy. Bloxy is an incredible new theme that I highly recommend. Now there's probably over 3000 themes and I've actually made a video on the top 10 best free WordPress themes for WordPress. And these top 10 themes are great and there's a lot of features that they offer. You can see how this one theme right here, Bloxy, it offers a light scheme and a dark scheme, which is really cool. Now remember, every theme offers some different variations from each other. Some might have different styling options, some might make your blog page look different, some might have different elements for the header and the footer builder. So it'll kind of be up to you to kind of go through each one and check them out. But uh, what I'll do here is I'll click on activate for the actual Bloxy theme. Now, every theme that you activate will usually have a starter plugin. So they call this the Bloxy Companion. So I'll go ahead and click on Install Bloxy Companion. Next, it's asking me to put in some information, but I'm just going to skip that for now. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to sign up and stuff like that. Now, the Bloxy theme by default has probably the most features of most WordPress themes, and here are some of their starter templates. However, they only have around maybe three templates for Elementor. And it is a little limited. However, the features are incredible. And you can go ahead and import one of their starter templates as well if you want to do that. And then also here they have other extensions and useful plugins. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the theme customizer here and see what else has happened to our website. So I'll click on visit sites. All right, cool. So now you see our website and oh my gosh, it looks distorted, it looks terrible, it looks kind of weird. Now, when you're switching between themes, all you need to do is just set the page width and everything will go back to normal because the page builder is doing all of the work. So let's click on customize. Let's check out a different theme customizer here. So this is the Bloxy theme customizer and it does have other various styling options and different things. For example, we can change this to a light scheme and a dark scheme, which I thought was really cool. Also under the general, they have like a, a scroll to top. So you can add a scroll to top icon on the bottom right side and then you can design it. So you can kind of, you know, put a design to it and then you can say, all right, I want it to be like this and a circle. And sometimes it won't appear. So you'll just, oh, there it goes, there it goes. If something doesn't appear, just click on publish and close it and then, you know, it'll go through. But you can add different little elements on your website. Also, this is really cool. They have a website frame. So you can actually put a frame on your website and this is perfect for like photography websites. So you can add a really cool frame to it like that. And there are other various styling options that this theme offers that Astra doesn't have. So now you can kind of see here how one theme might differ than the other. And personally, there's no best theme out there. I mean, there's themes that are really good and very convenient, but to say that one theme is the best overall, it's kind of hard to make that claim. Uh, every theme has different styling options. So you'll have to just go through each of these themes and check them out. But uh, I do recommend a lot of these themes on this video. So go ahead and check out this video. I'll put this video in the description below of this specific uh, tutorial. So let's say for example, all right, Daryl, um, we have this little gap right here. How do we fix that? So let's click on publish really quick and then I'll go ahead and close this. Now this is being done by the page builder. So first let's click on edit with Elementor. All right, now we notice we have to take off this title and we also need to uh, reduce this space. So on this gear icon, I will hide the title and then I will make this full width and update. So the website looks very similar. There are some small changes. And remember these button colors was done by the theme customizer. So that's why I don't recommend using the theme customizer to design the buttons or text, because if you switch themes, it might distort. But overall, it's the same exact WordPress theme. But now we have this really cool scroll to top. And we also have this uh, green little, um, you know, um, outline. So I do think the best free themes are probably uh, Neve, definitely Astra, Bloxy, Suki, and some other various ones but that's how you can kind of switch WordPress themes without losing your work. 
So before we go on to the next section, I just want to let you all know if, if you guys do decide to actually use the uh, pro plan for the Astra Agency, which is all of these templates, this is their pro version and these are only available through the upgrade. I do have a 10% discount for these templates and there are quite a bit. So if you do want access to these templates, uh, I will leave a link to purchase them along with a 10% discount. I do also have a 10% discount code for the Bloxy theme as well. Uh, I've been using this theme more and more and I gotta be very honest, uh, the features that it offers are very good. In fact, my next tutorial with the Amazon affiliate marketing tutorial, I will be using the Bloxy theme because I feel that it's, it's very intuitive. So I do also have a 10% code for the pro version for Bloxy and I will leave that in the description below of this video if you are interested. So that's pretty much it for the themes of the theme customizer. Go ahead, knock yourself out, go crazy, switch themes, and then uh, find out which one works for you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Now in this next section, I'll be talking about mobile responsiveness. Now this is pretty important. And remember, there are more mobile users today than desktop users. So you gotta take that into consideration when you're building your websites. Now I'll be showing you how to optimize your website for all mobile devices like Androids or iPhones and also tablets as well. So no matter what device your visitors are using, your website will look good for all mobile devices. All right, let's go back to the video guys. All right, party people, in this section, we'll be talking all about mobile optimization. Now, I can't really stress how important mobile optimization is because uh, as of 2020, there are more mobile users than there are desktop users. So you really want to make sure that your website is fully optimized for all mobile devices. And with Elementor, you can optimize your website for all mobile devices. Now, there's a few strategies and I'll just cover the basics first. Now, um, go ahead and turn on your builder of Elementor. And then on the bottom right here, you'll see responsive mode. So you can click on responsive mode and then you'll notice the preview for desktop, tablet, and also uh, a mobile. So first we'll click on tablet. Now people that are visiting your website on a tablet device, this is how they are going to view your current WordPress website. So let's say for example, you're editing your website and on the desktop version, it looks really nice. However, if we go to responsive and tablets, You'll now see that the website looks very different and it leads a lot of work. So let me show you all how to edit any elements for any device. Let's say for example, I want to edit this specific element. What I'll do is I will click on the element, and then I will go to style and then I want to change the topography. So under topography, I'll click on the pencil and now you'll see this little icon. So you'll see this little icon next to uh, several elements. And what I'll do is I'll click on this and make sure tablet is selected and then I'll just change the size like that. Now let's say for example, okay, so this button's on the right side and I need to put it on the left side for tablet users. Again, what I'll do is I'll click on this and then I will click on the left side like that to make sure that it's aligned uh, perfectly for tablet users. Now let's keep scrolling through the website. You'll also notice that these elements, they might be just too close to the edge and maybe you don't want that. So what you can also do is click on the columns and you can also adjust the columns for specific devices as well. For the advanced section, you can click on the, um, the padding right here and we can reduce the space or increase the space. Now for this element, we're gonna use margin and I didn't cover margin yet. Margin essentially tells the element where it wants it to start. So it's not necessarily space. It's saying, I want you to start maybe you know 10 pixels from the left. So remember, margin is where the actual element starts from. So it's saying, I want you to start 10 pixels from the left and that's margin. Padding is space. That's saying, I want space from that element. So now you'll see how it doesn't have that, uh, you know, that closed gap right next to the edge. And we can do the same thing on this side right here. Now we also have this section. And as you notice that we have this image and personally, we don't need to show this image at all. We just don't need it. And uh, I think people coming from a phone or tablet, they're gonna have no idea what this is. So let's go ahead and just take it out, right? Let's just get rid of it. You guys are fired. So uh, under this little uh, column icon, what I'll do is under the advanced section, under responsive, I can hide this on tablet and mobile. So that's it, it's gone. And we can keep scrolling on our websites and anything that we don't want, we can go ahead and take it out. But I think overall, I think it's decent. We can probably change this background pencil, but again, we can do that with the options here. So uh, you kind of need to go through your website and just take a quick look to see if there's something that you want to change. Now, let's say for example, you made the changes and you're like, well, how do I know if it's optimized? You know, how do I know if what I did is good? 
we can actually run it through a test uh, from Google and Google will determine if it is mobile friendly. So let's do that. I'll take this page and I'll copy it. Now I'll also go to the mobile friendly test by Google and I will put this in here. I will also go ahead and put this in the description below. You can use this to test your website if it is mobile friendly. So let's test the URL and let's see what Google determines about our website. And as you can see, the page is mobile friendly. And this is great because Google will actually rank your website if it is more mobile friendly. So you wanna make sure your website is mobile friendly. Now there is one thing I probably could have done. I have this divider here and what I can do is I can hide this for specific devices. So I probably should hide that for maybe the tablet users and also the mobile users. But again, you guys can go ahead and you know, go, we'll have fun and go mess around with that later. But I'm just demonstrating that's how you would do it. So now that we talked about mobile optimization, let's move on to the next section and talk about some of the advanced features that Elementor has to offer. So congratulations, you made it to the last section of this WordPress tutorial. Now, Elementor actually has a lot of advanced features. I'm sure you've noticed some features throughout the website that you're not really sure what they do. So I'll be covering all of the advanced features for the Elementor page builder. These features can really help speed up the workflow of your website and make making websites a lot more easier. So let's go ahead and cover them. Let's go back to the video, guys. Now, Elementor has a pro version, and the pro version does give you a lot more control over your website. I personally have the pro version, so this is my current account, and you guys can see I have the expert plan. If you guys do want to purchase the pro version, I'll leave a link below to purchase the pro version. If you guys do decide to purchase it, I do get a small commission, and of course, it helps me to make these tutorials for you all for free. Now, once you actually get the pro version, you can download the plugin. So you can go ahead and click on it and you can download it and you can upload it to your website. Once you upload the plugin, you guys will get a bunch of different really cool options. That includes uh, more widgets, the theme builder, and also motion effects. Let me just go ahead and demonstrate uh, some of the things that you get with the pro version. So first, I'll go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that you now have access to all of these other, um, you know, you have access to all these other pro widgets. So you have like uh, animated headlines. I'll delete that. We also have a flip box, a call to action. And I think there's these widgets will just make things a lot easier. So, I mean, it's, uh, they have a lot of really cool stuff as well. So then you have access to all of these, which is pretty helpful, you know, and a lot of people said, hey, you know, I really like the reviews. I can add that to my website. You can put the reviews tab right there and then you can go ahead and edit it. So you can change all of that stuff right here. You guys get it. I think by now you guys are you guys are already pro. So uh, but yeah, so you do get a list of all these pro elements and they do help you build your website. Now, also what you get access to is the global. So let's say, for example, you like this button right here. You know, it's like, all right, you know what? I want to save this as a global and this will be like the main button of your website. Usually you kind of want to, you know, carry the same button throughout the website and make it look good and, you know, make it look hip. So then we can go ahead and say, you know what? I want to take that button and I want to put it here as well. And then you can actually edit the specific button and it'll go ahead and edit all the buttons on your website or you can go ahead and unlink it and only design this specific button. So it is pretty helpful, especially if you have a lot of the same widgets, it can really help speed up the workflow of your website. And you know, I actually use it. It's actually really, really helpful. Also a really cool feature that I bet you're going to love here is the animations. Let me just, let me, let me just go ahead and click on this. You guys will get it. You, you guys will get this. So I'll click on this little uh, column. Now under the advanced section, all of the elements that you have now have the option to have motion effects. And beginners love this stuff. Just be a little careful. I know it looks really fun, but it's a really quick way to make your site look terrible. But now uh, we have the scrolling effects and mouse effects. So I'll turn on the scrolling effects. Let's say you want this specific section to have like a vertical scroll. So that means as I scroll, you'll see how the image kind of scrolls up into place. And when I scroll down, it keeps going. Now you can control the viewport of this as well. You can control the speed and you can also decide if it's up or down. So for example, as I scroll down, you'll see how the image kind of scrolls with me and it goes out of place, which just looks really, really cool. And you can use this for pretty much every option. So you can have horizontal as well. And we have transparency. Let's take a look at that one, huh? And maybe we can change that like in other way. So but the viewport, you can kind of control that. So for example, it looks like it's a blank spot. It just kind of boop, pops in right there. Maybe we can even put it more towards the center. But yeah, you guys get the idea, right? You guys get the point. Also, there's blur. So we can go ahead and blur that. And uh, it rotates, which 
be very careful guys this this is like really scary you can only use this for like really small images like this one here but uh when i see this on like beginners websites i'm like yeah man that looks terrible but i never say anything i'm just like yeah it looks great man you know and i just kind of like you know <laughs> move the other way so also uh, we have uh mouse effects so let's say for example you want something to move when actually someone hovers over it or you want it to tilt when someone hovers over it so i'll just click on mouse uh mouse track and i'll put this to something like uh i don't know 1.8 now you'll see when someone comes down here and they scroll their mouse over it they can kind of play with it you know and I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen that on websites and you know it's fun it's entertaining people are like oh man that's so cool you know it's nice and then again we can do that for 3d tilt as well we can tilt it as we kind of scroll now guys I, I gotta be honest elementor has tons of resources and guides on how to make some really amazing stuff with this um i don't want to go too crazy with it i'm just introducing you to it this is what you get in the pro version all right and then let's click on this guy and let's see what we can do here let's an advanced section motion effects uh, mouse effects 3d tilt yeah so maybe you can have this for all of your staff and you can kind of mess around with them and you know it, it's just fun you know it's just it's something neat and exciting so but yeah, that is the example of motion effects and all that other good stuff. So you also get the uh, option for attributes and also for custom CSS. So if you are a developer and you want to do something like center align or you want to uh, add some code in there to make something stay or you know margin auto or whatever you want, you can go ahead and add it right here and uh, yeah. So those are just a few of the options. Now you do get one other option that's really cool and that's called the Elementor Theme Builder. The Elementor Theme Builder is probably the number one reason why people purchase the Pro version. The Theme Builder allows you to have a different header and footer on various pages and you can set conditions for specific devices, for specific pages. Uh, there is a lot you can do with the Theme Builder. So what I'll do is I'll give you a quick demonstration of the Elementor Theme Builder by changing the header of this home page. So let's change the header. So right here, I'll click on header. And what's also really cool is that Elementor has all these different headers that you can use on your website. So let's just grab one really quick here. Let's let's do something simple, you know, not not too crazy here. All right, we'll we'll throw in this one right here. This one looks this one looks pretty good. All right, cool. So now we have our header. So you see we have our menu and we have our icons. Now what you can do is you can actually build a menu with the page builder instead of the uh, WordPress default. So we can add in like a button here, maybe over here. Uh, we can add in something else. And essentially what you can do is you can build the actual website using the page builder, or sorry, the menu with the page builder, which just makes things a lot more customizable. I mean, you, you can keep dragging all these elements. We can change the color and everything else. Now this right here is a placeholder. So you see how it says site logo? That means whatever you set as your site logo, that's what's going to display right here, all right? So let's click on publish. Now, where do I want to display this header? Now, we can have conditions. So I can display this header on the home page, on the about us page. I can put it on the home and the about us page and not the other pages. So let's click on add condition. So by default, we can put it on the entire website, which I think is standard for a lot of uh, you know websites. However, we can also do singular by saying, you know, no, 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 no. I wanna put this only on the home page. And I also wanna put it let me go ahead and add another condition. I also want to put this on the about us page. So same thing, we'll do pages and then we'll do about. All right, like that. And then we'll click on save and close. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the website. All right, and there you go. So now we have this new header. Now, of course, it's a little ugly, but I'm just kind of demonstrating that you can use the actual builder here to build out your menu, and then it'll automatically pull the um, logo of your website so it displays it there. And let's just test it now. So I only have this header on the home and the about us. If I click on the services page, it's going to revert back to the old menu. The same thing with the contact page, right? Now, if I click on the about us, it should be the new style header. So you can see how you can set specific conditions and really have a lot of flexibility and control. And it actually helps because there's some, there's some pages on the WordPress themes that just don't look well and you might wanna edit it and that's where Elementor comes in. Now, I personally own Elementor uh, Expert on my subscription. You can see that uh, I, I do have it and I do use it. So I'm not just someone who says, oh, buy it. And then they don't have it, of course. Like I've seen tons of blogs where they mention like a thousand things and they don't even use it. But I do uh, have this product. I do trust in it. Uh, if you guys do want to support this channel, you guys can use my link in the description. Uh, I have the expert plan. 
And I mean, that's pretty, you know, I, I manage, you know, I have like 20 websites, so uh, that works for me. But if you only have like one website, maybe two, I would probably get the plus plan, but um, you can check out the reviews. People really do love and trust this product. All right, party people, that's about it for this section. I really hope to help you out. I hope it wasn't confusing. I did my best to explain it. I really should change this header. It's super ugly. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, party people, welcome to the last design tip and also the most important. Now guys, as you're building your website, you're gonna put images on it and then you're gonna say, hey, my website's slow. Why did Zero recommend garbage hosting? I'm gonna vote down this video. And guys, the number one reason why your website is slow is because of the images. Now, when you're building your website, you need to be very cautious about the image size that you put on it. Now, I've made a complete guide for you guys. It's completely free. It's on my website, and this is how you speed up your WordPress website. Now, the first rule is keep your entire page under three megabytes. So let's say, for example, we have the website, right? You can go ahead and take this, and then you can go ahead and go to tools.pingdom, and you can paste it in there. And this will tell you how large your website is. This will tell you um, uh, all about your website. So let me go ahead and start the test. Now, also, when you um, upload your images, you want to make sure that they're small. So generally, let's go back and take a look at my guide right here. You want to keep your images somewhere around 150 or 100 kilobytes, no more than 200 kilobytes. So let's just say, for example, you, you load an image on your website and it's one megabyte. Your website's gonna be slow because you wanna keep your whole page under three megabytes. And I find that beginners make this mistake quite often. If you look at uh, if you look at my website here, you'll see that I have a 1.9 megabytes and my website's loading at around one second. So that's really good. You know, one second is really, really good. And let's go back over here. So you can see this website has a two megabytes and it's loading at around 2.24. The reason why it's a little bit slower than mine is because I'm not caching it. So you might want to uh, cache your websites and that's also included in my, um, in my guide. So remember the images, keep it around 100 kilobytes to 50 kilobytes to you know 200, no more than 200 and your total page size cannot be three. Now under your image, you can click on right click and go to get info and it'll tell you the size of the image. So this image right here is massive, 1.2 megabytes. Now let's say you find an image that you really like. You're like, Daryl, I want this image, it's it's huge, but I, I don't know Photoshop, you know, I don't know how to optimize it. Well, let me show you how to do that. I know, you're welcome, you're welcome. So let's say we have this image, 1.2, it's too big, we have to reduce the size. What I'll do is I'll go to tinyjpeg.com, which is another really good website that I recommend on my website. Uh, what I'll do is I will drag in that element, or I'm sorry, elements, duh. Drag in the image, here we go. I'll go ahead and drag this. So by default, that image was 1.2 megabytes, right? It's a pretty massive image. You know, it's pretty large. We need to, you know, really, we need to really reduce that size. So let's see what they can do for us. And look at that. It is now 200 kilobytes. I mean, that is a massive drop. So it is almost six times less than what it was. So you can see using this website, it'll really help you out. It's completely free, does not cost you anything. They don't even have a limit. You know, I don't even know how these guys make money. You know, I just, maybe there's ads on it. I don't even know. I've never paid for them. I, I, if, maybe there's a donate button. I don't know. We should, oh, there is a donate button. Well, you guys can donate. I'll, I'll, I'll donate too. Yeah. If, I'll match your donations. Just tell me in the comments how much you donate and, and I'll match it. But uh, yeah, guys, so uh, make sure your website is fast. Make sure that you follow these rules. Uh, remember the images, that's the number one reason uh, because uh, I think slow websites is probably the common mistake with beginners. So that was it for this section. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Welcome to the bonus section of this video. Now in this part of the video, I'll be giving you a lot of good resources on where to get free templates and also some really cool free plugins for your WordPress website. All right, so let's go check them out. All right, party people, this is our little last section. I'll make it very quick and I'm gonna miss you guys. This is our last section together and I'll just go ahead and talk about the Elementor resources. So on my website under Elementor, there are a lot of resources. You know, there are plugins that you can use. There's Elementor themes you can use and templates. So I compiled the list of really good resources like these plugins. These plugins, they give you blocks, they give you templates, and they also give you more elements to use. And I'm not trying to hate on Elementor, but these guys do offer a hell of a lot more than Elementor's um, widgets. But Elementor has the uh, theme builder and the motion effects. So I think it's kind of worth it here. 
Um, now, I also recommend themes. So we have Bloxy. Uh, this is a newer theme that I kind of started looking at. And I got to be honest, they contacted me and told me about the theme and it was incredible. Also Astra, amazing theme. We can't forget Astra. Neve, Neve is also a very solid WordPress theme. Essentials, that's the theme I'm using. But uh, personally, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't use it. It can be very confusing at times, but we love them and I, I use them. So you can go ahead and check out this list of you know, some WordPress themes that I recommend. Also, there are tons and tons and tons of websites that have like thousands of templates for Elementor. So Aladdin Factory is a good one. I, I do like them. I'm not even an affiliate for them. So if you guys click on my link, I don't even make them. I don't even make money. So they just, I just like their designs, but uh, yeah. Um, there's other ones, you know, uh, theme packs. They're, they're all right, they're not bad, but it's all about what you like. So go ahead and check out this page. And uh, again, guys, I hope I hope everything turned out good in this video. I think that's pretty much it. If there's something that I missed, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I will continue to update all of this. I'm actually gonna edit some things and change some themes because uh, I do like Gutenex, but I think there's a lot better themes than Gutenex now, like Suki or something like that. So yeah, that's it for this section. And uh, that's it for this tutorial, guys. So congratulations, you now have a fully completed WordPress website. Now, if there's any questions that you guys have for me, like WordPress themes or plugins or website selling elements or templates, let me know in the comments below. I do my best to get to every comments, but I do get around 50 to 100 to 200 comments a day. So it can be a little hard responding to everybody. If there's anything that I missed or something that I didn't cover, also let me know in the description below and I will uh, see if I can update the video or make a separate video for that. And make sure to like this video, guys. I do spend weeks making this video to make sure it's perfect for all beginners. So uh, yeah, I do spend a lot of time making these. So, but again, I hope this video helped you guys out. Congrats on your new websites and I will see all of you party people in the next video. Take care.